uh, we're going to talk about how to find high quality blueprints and how to use them correctly in Blender, right? So let's say we were trying to make a tank or any vehicle for that matter, any gun or vehicle or any object or anything at all that you're trying to make. This is probably going to be the method of looking for blueprints that you're going to want to go for, right? So let's say I want to make a tiger tank, all right? And I'm going to open up Google and I'm just going to search up something like tiger tank blueprint, all right? So whatever it is you're looking for, you just add a blueprint to the end and then you're going to get a bunch of pictures, hopefully, right? Now, there's a clear difference between looking for blueprints on Google Images or looking for them on certain websites, right? Because there are websites like the Blueprints, for example, uh, which have a whole bunch of different blueprints. Anything you can think of, they have a blueprint for it. The problem is that they are quite expensive, right? So if you want to have a blueprint of a tiger tank, you can get a vector. It's going to be a perfect high quality image. But the problem is it's going to cost you like 20 bucks or something like that, right? So for the most part, it's not really worth it, right? Unless you're a professional and you're going to use it for something where you're making a really high quality uh, model where you need, really need it to be accurate, then it's going to be worth it. But for the most part, it's it's really you're going to be better off looking for free blueprints on Google, right? So we're looking for Tiger Tank blueprint, right? And now we're going to go over to the images and we got a whole bunch of different stuff. And now it's kind of a, it's going to be kind of confusing. Which one do we choose, right? What is a good quality blueprint, right? Now, when I type in Tiger Tank, first of all, it gives me two types of the Tiger Tank, right? There's a Tiger 1 and there's a Tiger 2, right? So it depends on which one you're going for. In this case, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to show you generally how to find a good blueprint. But make sure you get the vehicle that you want, right? Not something else because there are small variations which might mess you up, all right? So the first thing that we're looking for are really high quality images, right? So the bigger resolution, the better the blueprint, right? So for example, this first image that comes up over here, we can see right off the bat that it's like 2,210 pixels by 3,040 pixels, right? So that's pretty good. And this is the Tiger 1 tank, right? Now in this case, since this is a very popular tank, it's really easy to find really high quality images and there's going to be a whole bunch like this one as well, right? This is the Tiger 2 tank. It's also a very high resolution image. So that's going to be good as well. But for example, this second image over here is not that good because if we open that one up, it's only like uh, 439 pixels. So it's not really going to be that good because we can't see a whole bunch of detail. It's not very clear where the lines are. It's a little bit blurry. We can't really see everything. So this is not going to be the preferred type of blueprint. Now, sometimes the problem is you're not really going to have much of a choice, right? So sometimes you're only going to be able to find really low quality bl blueprints like this. And in that case, that's unfortunately just what you're going to have to use because obviously there's nothing else available. It can still be pretty useful because you can still tell the dimensions of the vehicle, right? So you can still use it for just setting the length and the height and maybe, uh, maybe you can see the shapes of certain details, like for example, the turret over here. So it can kind of be useful for that, right? So the main purpose of a blueprint is still going to be accomplished even with a low resolution image, right? But ideally you want to have a high quality image like this. And the other thing that we're looking for on a picture like this is that it has four views of the vehicle, right? It has a top view, has a side view, and has a front and a back view, right? This is really important because if we're missing one of these, there's a lot about the vehicle that we're not going to be able to see. Let me see if I can find an example here, a vehicle where we don't have one of the very important views. The front and the side view, it's not so important to have both of them. It's just important to have one of them. Ideally, you want to have both, but sometimes, uh, sometimes you're only going to find one. But something like top view, that's just non-negotiable. That's probably that's something that you're definitely going to need if you're using any kind of blueprint at all, right? For example, this one, right? It doesn't have a top view. This is not going to really do us any good, right? Because we can't tell the width of the vehicle. But let's say we've decided that this is the image that we want to go with, right? So we're going to open that in a new tab. We're going to download that. We're going to save it somewhere. And then we have to process this image somehow to make it a little bit easier to use in Blender, right? Now for this, you're going to have to open up some kind of a image editor, whatever it is you have. You're just going to need some very basic functions, right? I'm using PaintNet, but any any uh, if you don't have any software, just download some free image editing software and just look up how to do some of these basic functions. You can probably learn it in like five minutes, right? Because we're not going to do anything complicated here. The first thing I usually do is I invert the colors of an image because it makes them a little bit easier to look at, right? So now the background is black and the blueprint is white. So it's not that bright. It's not that hard to look at for a very long time, right? It can get a little bit painful if it's a bright image. And the other thing that I usually like to do with these images is I like to take my cropping tool and I like to separate all the different views of the vehicle, right? So for example, this in this case, we have a side view. I'm going to select the whole side view and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into new image and then I'm going to save that separately, right? And I'm going to do the same thing for all the other views of the vehicle, right? And that way, when I want to open up, open them up in a program in Blender, it's going to be a lot easier to just go to stop view and place it as a, as a top view image. And then I can use the side image separately and I can just adjust them accordingly. But I don't, I don't have to have four full size images and just 
uh, align them correctly. It's a lot easier to work with if you have separate images, right? So now when I go to Blender, I can very easily open up these images by just pressing Shift A. I can add a new image, and then I can go for a reference right here, okay? And then I can just find the image that I saved. For example, in this case, I have the top view image over here, and that's automatically going to be placed in the background of whatever view that I'm, uh, whatever view I'm in at the time I'm adding the image, right? So if I'm in top view, it's going to be added to the bottom of the, it's going to be added so that it's facing the top view, right? So then when I go to top view again, it's perfectly aligned with my view. And then of course, I'm gonna to wanna to move it downwards a little bit so it's not in the way of whatever I'm doing because when you're in orth orthographic projection, it doesn't make any difference, right? The size is the same. And I also usually like to just reduce the opacity a little bit so it's a little bit easier to look at, right? And now for the sake of simplicity, I'm not gonna be adding all the other images in now, but let's talk about how we can use this blueprint now to create a model. Now it's really hard to use a blueprint if you don't have some kind of a basic understanding of what the shape of the object that you're creating is like, right? So you need to have some image on the side which shows you the actual real life model of, uh, or, or even just a 3D model of the object that you're, that you're working with, right? Because you have to have some understanding of what the shape is like. In this case, since I know what this tank already looks like, I kind of can tell that this surface here on top, that's the top panel, and then it kind of slopes uh, forwards, that gives you the front plate, and it goes to the sides as well, and then this is where it separates from the mud guard. So I know what uh, objects are shown in which part of the blueprint here, right? It's gonna be kind of hard to tell that if you've never seen the object in, in 3D before, right? So in this case, I can already start aligning some of the parts here, and I can just uh, find the edges here, and. Uh, and place my edges, uh, place the edges of my object onto the edges of the blueprint, right? Now, in some cases, it's a little bit hard to tell where the edges are that you're looking for, right? So in this case, you can see that this, this edge here between the top panel and the front panel, it's a little bit thick, it's a little bit unclear where exactly the edge is. In this case, you just wanna kind of eyeball it, you wanna kind of guess it, and you wanna go for the middle of the edge, right? That's probably where, um, where the, the, the exact corner or the exact angle is going to be placed. But it's kind of up to you. It kind of depends on where. Um, it kind of depends on what particular blueprint you're working for, uh, with, and uh, how it affects your model, where you place the edge, right? So it's, it just kind of depends on what works best, and that's pretty much all you gotta know. So I'll see you guys in the next one.